Howdy, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the Cowboys of the Osage podcast, brought to you by the Ben Johnson Cowboy Museum, located in historic downtown Pahuska, Oklahoma. Hey, it's old Cody over here. And as always, I have my co-host with me, Mr. Rodeo Historian himself, Mr. Everything Western Historian himself, Jimbo Snively. Hey, Jimbo, what's going on and who do we have today? Hey, Cody boy, it's just another great day in Osage, man. And uh, Cody, we've got one of the most dominant ropers in the history of rodeo. And I don't use that lightly. Uh, he, uh, he's an eight-time world champion, six-time calf roping champion. He was a steer roping champion in 1983. All throw won the all around in 1983. Won the triple crown, actually. He's an eight times NFR average winner. Four in the calf roping, four in the steer roping. And that's a record. He's got an. Uh, he's been to an unbelievable 32 NFRs. 19 in the calf roping, 13 in the steer roping, and uh, we're just tickled to death to have him sit in with us today. And. Roy, welcome to the Cowboys of the Osage podcast. Roy Cooper. Hey, Jimbo, you and Cody, thank you. Shoot, I heard good stuff on what you're doing up there at uh, Paul Husk and the Ben Johnson Museum. So good luck to you and whatever I can do to help. Well, we really appreciate it, man. Roy, let's go back to a long ways to Monument, Mon- Monument, New Mexico. A couple of guys by the name of Jimmy and Tuffy Cooper, your dad and uncle. How'd they get started and, and who helped them? You know what? I don't really know. I'm sure their dad, you know, my granddad, but I was too young whenever he uh, passed away. But they roped and he used around and and uh, shit, they got us all into it and they ranched out there. And uh, years ago, they had a gas station. <clears throat> and Jim would go road you on a week, then Tuff would go a week. And it was like, uh, <clears throat> but they roped and enjoyed it and they loved the sport and the passion and the love for roping. Right. Well, there's New Mexico has an unbelievable history of. Uh, oh man, they they all come from that. You know, Jake McClure Arena's right there, but Sonny yeah. Davis and Olin Young, William Franklin. <clears throat> you know, I mean, he'll. They're all the most Cowboys was out there. Troy Ford, Olin Young. Troy Ford. Oh, I mean, yes, sir. Homer Homer Pettigrew. Golly. Yes, sir. That's all done. A lot of them old champions grew up out in there. They sure did. They sure did. Why do you think so many tough ropers came from that area? Roy? You know what? I think it's a different. You know, like them, you know, that was Kef open and, and, you know, longer scores and bigger arenas out in there. And, you know, same way as like, uh, you know, Arizona, they took over team open for a long time. You know, it went back time to night. And then, you know, I mean, in Oklahoma, man, they had the best Kef ropers. You know, it shifted later on. But, man, there's good Cowboys everywhere. It don't matter where you grow up. Yeah, just who you around? Just who you around? I guess. Hey, did you go? Up, did Did you grow up going to all the rodeos with your dad, like your your boys did, and I did with my dad? No, I went some off and on. You know, well, I can remember something you know, on going to Cheyenne and stuff with him. You know, I, I can remember all, uh, my, Don McLaughlin's son, Mike McLaughlin, and uh, Mac Altizer. Here we'd all be out there roping that dummy back behind at Cheyenne shoots, but. Man, my mother took me to junior rodeo since I was 10, 11 years old. So we, we stayed home in the summer, and, and uh, here we probably went to 30 rodeos, you know, a year back when we was kids. Cody, uh, Roy, I've got an old newspaper article from 1949, Calgary, Canada. First place, Jimmy Cooper, your uncle, Monument, New Mexico, won $1,274. Second place was Jim Snively, my grandfather, won $900. Fifty-five dollars, and third place was Homer Pettigrew from New Mexico. So Man, that's that's some history there. I, that's going back a little bit. That's I pretty would, good. I've seen a, yeah, that was good. But I've seen uh, hello, uh, my old uncle Jim, I call him. But he had a, he still got that bronze. He passed away last year or something. But he he got that bronze from Calgary. More it's a nice, he's a nice sucker. It's nicer than ones me and Tuff one up there. Well, uh, we've got one here in the museum. My grandfather won it two years later in 1951, and it's here in the Ben Johnson Cowboy Museum. Oh, that's good. That's that's good. I, I love that. We got the buckle, too. Who was that buckle donated by, Jimbo? The York Hotel in Calgary. Oh, really? Canada. Yeah. I think it's gone now, but that's where everybody stayed, and they sponsored the buckle. And Cody's got a real pretty uh, buckle here from the York Hotel. Wow. Did you go up there? No, my dad did. That was before my time. Uh, my right. dad was there the day. Uh, well, he said he remembered your uncle winning that that day. Really? Yeah. There's a lot of history up there, and it's you know it's changed. But I mean, 
I remember when I first was going up there, the other cows was at the back end. We was roping her for kids, and that's big. And and then this just got bigger and bigger. And she did, I actually, the first rodeo, I paid 50000 And uh, yeah. set in 1978, and I remember when I won it. It was the very first one, and I thought, wow. Did you cash that check before you left town, Roy? Oh, uh, yeah, I had to give him about 70% of it and then the out money and everything else, I think. I don't remember. <laughs> I don't dad, know. My dad said when he was a kid going up there, they had all the money laid out on a table. They didn't pay in checks, and it was cash, and you'd go in this room, of course, they had guards, and all the money was laid out on a big table, and you just right. there and they paid you in cash. Do you exactly. Remember? Yeah. Oh, yeah, they still, they do it. You can go and cash your checks up there in the office, and they had guards there, they could, and it was especially them $50,000 checks and stuff, and they was giving them, but then your rodeo checks. But, you know, it was like, I think, times I wanted, I, I, I won average up there four times, I think, but I only won, it was 50000 I won it twice, but it was like uh, probably 70 cents on a dollar on your money. You know, and, and like Tough, when, he, when Tough won it, he'll... It was a, it was equal money and it paid a hundred thousand. Wow! I mean, just just how in, you know how the economy is and stuff. That that's been a hell of a rodeo and it's been one of my favorites. And shoot, I, I enjoyed going up there. I bet one four times. Just a long, just a, just, 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 just a long ways up there. <laughs> yeah, it is a little ways up there. So, Roy, when you guys were uh, growing up out there in New Mexico, what was your guys' average practice session like, and who all would come out there and rope with you guys? Ah, uh, man, we roped all. The, that's all we did is rope. You know what I mean? Uh, shoot, we never we roped all, all, all afternoon and stuff. And then, then, you know, my dad might make us work a little in the morning, check some cattle or something. But and then people, all guys would come by all the time, and we as kids and roping. And my dad had a sign out there; everybody's roped in our arena, and it was on the tree there for years. And, but it's uh, that's all we did. We roped, man. We we enjoyed it. Roy, you kind of revolutionized cab roping. I think you did anyway. You were the first one I remembered that held on to your slack, and uh, also the way you tied calves real low to the ground. Where did you? Uh, did you copy that from somebody else, or was that just? You know, my you dad that? taught me. My, my dad taught me that. Uh, it's my flanking in that time, actually. Well, holding the slack, man. I was like in college, and I was learning to hang on to it, and, and you know, and pop them around, and you know, I was doing that. Thought, wow, man, mm-hmm. I can save some time here. So, you know, we, uh, I kind of picked that up on my own. This boy, Butch Bodhi, rope left hand, and he'd rope, and he'd have, he'd pull his slack, and he'd have his hand on the ground, and he'd wave it back. And I mean, I thought, shoot, why don't I, you just hold it and let them pop around in your lap? And I thought, man, so there we went, and time started getting faster. Boy, it did. I know they were tired. There fast. were some big, some, some of them big ones, you better jerk them down, though, back in the day. Oh, yeah, you <laughs> know, back when my grandfather and, and your uncle and dad were roping uh, those big rank calves, and you wanted to be helping them up down there at the end of the rope. You, you, know? you better, you'll get, you get your butt run over. Mm-hmm. Hey Roy, when your uh, when your dad and uncle were rodeoing and you were a little old kid there, how how were they getting back and forth to places like Cheyenne and Calgary or Madison Square? Oh, they had, you know back back in them days, man, they had uh, a car and an inline trailer. You know what I mean? I, I don't even take pickup and campers. Was really out yeah, by the end. Everybody's using car, and, but you know I don't remember. I remember sleeping in the back seat and I was a kid. And, you know, that old Oldsmobile or something. And I met my mother rodeos, took us around in junior rodeos in a car and a no inline trailer. So that's the way we went. I used to sleep in the black back seat of the floorboard of the pickup, Jimbo. And boy, howdy, that I think it was either the road or the muffler would start getting that floorboard pretty hot. <laughs> I, think mm-hmm. I, I, I cooked myself back there a couple times. And then uh, when you finally started rodeoing, junior rodeoing, and uh, so on and so forth, how, how did your rigs pr- progress then? Uh, you, you know, each year they got better and stuff. I mean, you know, have a look at them today. Oh, yeah. I mean, well, we started out just to pick up and camper and, you know what I mean? And uh, then they got better production, better deal, better quality, better trucks, better campers. And they come with Scotty's. Yeah, my last year I rode here, I had a couple of buses. Oh, and yeah. uh, I remember whenever I went to Cisco Junior College with your dad down there and, uh, you know, we did that old pickups and campers, you know, running around trying to high school rodeo, junior rodeo, and then college rodeo. Where all did you go to college at, Roy, to rodeo? I went to Cisco my first two 
two years down there. And that was in the Southwest region then. And, and then I moved to Durant and Southeastern and that was up there in a different region. So we was, uh, I went to the Cisco and two up there in in uh, Durant and Southeastern, and that was it. Who was some of the guys you went to to college with there? Because they, I know some uh, of them. Durant, like some Durant. Tough teams. Uh, we had the Nash. We had a, the best team there was in National Rodeo in National College Rodeo probably ever. Steve Bland, Billy Tig, Phil Longacre, James Ward, Jerry Beagley. I mean, here yeah, we won uh, two national. My two year, I won two national championships along with them. And Steve Lamb was there four years, and he won four national championships with them. He was probably, I mean, they inducted him to the Oklahoma, to the Duran, Oklahoma, Southeastern Oklahoma Hall of Fame the other day, and it was, uh, it was amazing. I went up there and, and got to see it, and his brother was there, 94 years old, and it was unbelievable. Oh, uh, who else went? Was uh, Lori, Lori Primrose, Lori Shoulders with you? Uh, yeah, they had, a good, they had a good team, too, Lori Shoulders. I think I remember her. They had a real good team one year when they were there. I think they was behind me a few years though. I got you. They had and Ole Smith was up there. Buster Record went up there. I mean Rick Bradley was up there. That's their three world champions. You know what I mean? Dang, sounds yeah, like a who's who a rodeo, Jimbo. Wow, yeah, absolutely. Uh, I mean, yeah, we went. We didn't even when we first went. We didn't even have. There was only six of us on a team, man. And we just Ernie Taylor got me there, and I went to school there, and. And we didn't even have – our president was our coach. You know, we just had some kids in the little arena back there, and we roped. And and it got bigger and huge, and we got, put them on the map. Your sister, Betty Gale, she really made a name for herself down there at Southeast. She State. did. She she worked hard at it. She, I don't remember how many – four or five national championships she won. She had a good team, good – you know, put them all together right there and a good facility where they was. And, yeah, she worked hard, you know, on that, and she took it very serious. Boy, uh, she paved the way for a lot of what these girls are doing now. Well, um, I appreciate that. My mother would like to heard that, but here we know that, and that it's she did it, she did her job, and she enjoyed it. That's what she loved. She loved to she loved to help them kids. She loved to rope. Cool. And then that girl that that girl's doing it now, Christy. Uh-huh. Oh, and she's uh, she's Broderick. She's she's very very good, and she's put she's worked her butt off to make it better and build it back up like Betty Gill and. Yeah, we're proud of her. I, I went to the introduction the other day, and she was there. And I mean, she's she's put a lot a lot of time into it, and got people helping her. What would Betty Gale think of the money that they're roping for now? Ah, uh, she would have loved it. She she wouldn't have believed it. How everything, how things have changed. What about you know? these? What about these horses now, Roy? Uh, whatever you want to pay for them. <laughs> Unbelievable high horses are so expensive. I mean, good ones, and I mean, you know it. And it's it's a it's a range there. You know, if you're in, if you're in the top fifteen or you rope good, you know, you got a chance to win like uh, the American a hundred thousand or Calgary a hundred thousand. You know, places where you can win and they'll the money at the national finals now, putting near thirty thousand dollar go arounds. You first chance is there's big rope when you can win that kind of money, so you can afford to you know give a hundred thousand for a horse if you can win on him. Feel paid, you know, he's cheap. If I mean, he can pay for itself. You know, I mean, but the better horse, the easier it is to win. So it's just, and you can't just have one. I mean, you got to have a few if you that's what you're going to do for a living. What's it take to to make a good horse, or what what's it take for to win on a horse today? What what do you need out of a horse? Well, it ain't it, that ain't going to change. You know, everything the same. You know, you I mean, that's all the same from years ago. But I mean, it's littler kids now and shorter scores. But it was like you got to have a horse that'll stand there and that I mean that you trust and you know in that box. So I mean, that's where you get your start. And when you can hit that very one one's got good timing with you. Some horses fit people, some don't fit the others. You know, they score according to what they are. But I mean, they and they you can't beat speed. You got to have that speed. Right. And, and I mean, for great horses, you're, you know, great horses make great ropers. Sure. You know, and, and so, I mean, so, and it, that's the same way it was it when shoot Jim Bob all times or Troy Fort. I mean, when, when he had old Baldy and so, I mean, they're very birthdays, always had good horses, but it was like, it, 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 for years, whoever's got the best horses is a champion, or whoever's got the best horses makes a final. Right, right. Well, the you horses know, and that's, that's in, go ahead. Do horses have to do as much as they did back then, though, with these shorter? Oh, sides? I'm sure. I'm, oh, yeah. You still got. They still got to work, and they still have to get across there, and you know, get in it and get out of it. I and mean, it's up to the cowboy to keep them on their feet. Just, I mean, they got the jerk down real in. I don't like that in places, but. 
You know, ring, uh, yeah, you got, I mean, a good horse, a good horse. You got to have a good horse. You're right in the grand entry to me. <laughs> you right, got, right. I mean, it takes good horses to win and, you know, and hell, you know, once, once you have, have to, I, was, I was very lucky and I had five or six probably in my career, you know, two or three of them stood out that you, you know I mean, <laughs> You don't realize how good a horse you got till you don't have one, right, and, and, right. and then you're on that road every day. And you know, I mean, what, what he's got to win, he's got to work. You know, I mean, he's got to make he's got to make it where it's easy for me to win. Did you? Oh, uh, don't miss. Yeah, yeah. Uh, did you own most of your horses you rode, or did you borrow a lot of horses? Uh, no, I, I've owned nearly all of mine. I, I rode a horse named Whip that belonged a bit to Stone, and I won a couple, of, two or three championships on. But he's really the one. I mean, he's one of the rest of them. I really. I rode my own, had my own, and you know what I mean. So it, it's just uh, you pay, got to pay that amount money too. But I mean, hell, I'd rather pay me out money, not pay no money at all. Boy, <laughs> <laughs> at, least, at least, at least you know, you, at least you know you're winning something. Roy, uh, uh, Roy, when you roped at Oklahoma City and Las Vegas in the NFR, which one do you like better? Well, the, when I first went to the finals in Oklahoma City, it was in Will Rogers over there, that old, you know, in the old, old Coliseum, the old building. You know, and it's a big arena. I liked it. The, like, and I really liked the Marriott over there where, at Oklahoma City. I mean, it was like, I mean, it was still long enough and it was big. And I went to Vegas, man. It was like a basketball arena. I mean, it's it was, everything changed. I wasn't geared for that. Right, you know, right. I, I, wasn't, I wasn't really geared for that little tight deal like that. I mean, and a quick start, and ha- everything happens fast. And back when you first go back, there's no warm up. It was real crowded. I mean, it's not. It was different. I mean, you know, they had the money, and the, you know, it made it better. And look at today. I mean, how much people can win. That to me, I said, you know, I mean, it changes your roping. I mean, you just, they like it fast, and they like it short scores and little kids. So that's the way it is nowadays. Back then, you needed more of a horse and more of a, you know, a cowboy and who won the average on ten head and who. I mean. Who stayed in there? And I mean, bigger kids back then. And I mean, you, you, it was it's, it was just it's completely different. But you still have to have good horses, and you know they're going to go where the money goes. Well, out there at Vegas, that short setup, it looks like it'd be hard to keep a horse from setting up there toward the end of the week. Did you ever? Oh, uh, you can get that. Oh, yeah, they can get like that. I mean, some of them can. They can get tight. Then build up a horse. They'll pull up too. I mean, yeah, sure. They'll quit. They'll quit running halfway between that deal. I mean, you got to. Did you ever them, go anywhere during the day or in the morning and work on your horse any or anything? Or oh yeah, I took my, I took kids out there. I would leave uh, the hill of steer open finals would be uh, in Thanksgiving. So I'd leave from there. I'd already have me ten kids out there in my care forces, and I'd flew from Oklahoma City and get to Vegas and stay there like three or four days early. And then after the steer open, and they, I'd go out there every morning and tie some or uh, rope. Hell, I might rope a couple of kids. I even took a practice horse with me. Yeah, but I got out of them. I get out of them casinos and get you know get around, and get out and ride yeah. your own horse. I had a place to I had a place to ride, and they took care of me. And that's what I did. And once I started doing that, I started winning a little. It took me a while to figure it out out there. Right, right. I remember one year you were roping out there at Vegas, and you ran your hand down a cow's uh, a calf's ma- mouth. It looked like, and you had to yeah, put on first, a- my last then my first, last year I roped out there two thousand. He come off that ground, boy, and he stuck his, his mouth is open, and it cut. You know, I had to have like I don't know nine or ten stitches in there, and it busted every night. And I had to go get it sewed up every night. And Joe Evers finally got me a glove, and I cut the fingers out of it and helped a little bit. It, man, that every my whole final skin <laughs> in a row. Yeah. Super Looper, who who named you Super Looper? Do you know? You know, I was up there on the Sports Illustrated. There, I, I, I was looking at some pictures the other day, and somebody with the Sports Illustrated that was covering the finals in Oklahoma City. I'm going to say a three, something like that, maybe. I, I, I would say right in there. I don't really remember. Hey, Roy, what about the uh, the Roy Cooper Roper boots? Can you tell us a little uh, bit about we, how those we, came we, along? We had them out there at Walmart, man. But yeah, they was good, a little cheap boots, a little rope with forty nine ninety five, and but shoot, yeah, you know, what you bought? There wasn't no ostrich, uh, Justin, you know, ropers, but they was there's nice little boots, and 
it lasted for a while, and it was good for me and shoot good for Walmart. Yeah, I always uh, I always expected you to, to to pick that back up and come out with the the new new generation of Roy Cooper boots that be like the well, you know Michael what I Jordan's give that a thought today, of it. You know? I thought I give that a thought of that crossed my mind. I don't. I'd, I'd like to follow up on that. Yeah, you ought to, Roy, because uh, I mean you're just like Michael Jordan in the sport of rodeo, so. And uh, I don't know any guy that has his own boots when you look at them. You're the only guy that I've ever known of in the whole sport of any cowboy sport, really, that you look at a pair of boots and you say, oh, that's Roy Cooper Ropers right there. Um, you know, Trevor, he has his line of Relentless, but they're they're not known as Trevor Ropers or anything like that. Right, so, exactly. I mean, you're about as close to... Yeah, that, uh, that's, in, that's, that's interesting. I've thought about it two or three times. That I think this is, is a tough business, and they're all made down there at the same place in Mexico. But, but it doesn't yeah, matter. Oh, With your name and everything backing it, you need a little logo of your roping, a little silhouette, just like Jordan jumping. And, uh, there you go. Know well, I appreciate... Roy Cooper Ropers for the rest of our lives. We should come, I, out, back, pre- come back out with them, Roy. So I appreciate I appreciate the compliment, and that, that's that's interesting. Well, maybe someone will hear the right thing on this uh, podcast, and something will come of it. You never know. Maybe they'll give me a new call, and shoot, we can get it. We can get it four percent. There you go. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Give us five dollars a pair or something. Let's get this there you going. go. Let's get this done. All right. right. Well, I appreciate you guys having me on, and if I can ever help you and come through there, I got some good memories there at Paul Huskin. I mean, hell, I had a master up in Moats Camp over there one time with the boy Terry Postrack. And I remember accidentally I won my first year open on Rod Hartman's, uh, one of Rod Hartman's horses. But uh, I've enjoyed it up there, and I, I enjoyed y'all uh, hey, having Roy, me on you. Before yesterday. you go, I need you to uh, tell everybody, especially some of our young listeners that are trying to rope calves and team rope or trying to rope calves and steer rope, what's the secret for you? to be able to rope them around the neck or rope them around the horns? Well, <laughs> I roped a lot of steers around the horns. I mean, around the neck. Yeah. Excuse me. Yeah, you know, when I first happen. started, no, yeah, I roped a lot. You know, but roping steers, is different. I, just, I didn't swing as fast roping steers. I, mean, I had a little more spoke, you know, and kind of kept it more flat. It, it took me a while to figure it out because, I mean, I was an automatic calf rope. I had a little dip in it when I run there. I mean, it's just slick as it could be right around the neck, and you know what? Finally, I learned to get the front of it up a little bit and, and not swing this fast. And find a position where you like to catch them, where you can catch them at. Ride right where you where you can catch them. Hey, where's the who who's the the toughest match roping guy you ever roped against, Roy? Uh, roping kids. I mean, I'd probably have to say Gary Ledford. Tom Ferguson was tough. Phil Lyon, but that Gary Ledford was he was the man. And, you know, then Joe, I mean, there wasn't no cakewalk with him every day. I mean, he was tough. So, but I saw a good match with you and uh, Brent Lewis one time at Roswell. Oh, yeah, that was a good one. That was a long day, too. Yeah, we got ready for that when I was, just, I was like a little older. I don't remember. Yeah, but he was, yeah, I had two good horses that day, and that was a good, good match, and there was a lot of money bet. Hey, and uh, while we're, talking about the differences in some roping and stuff what about the timed event championship i know you did you go to the very first one roy i went to the first one and you know what i never even come close to winning i won second one time i couldn't heal i mean i, I won third few times that i mean if i could have healed i could have won it i did i didn't i just throw it and jerk it out and i didn't have no pace and feeling and and uh that was that was me. That was my problem. Yeah, I mean that was. I went to the very first one. It was rough, man. It was like seven in the morning, then one o'clock at meal, then eight o'clock at night, and then the next day seven in the morning. It took them a while to figure that out, but it was that's a heck of a deal, and people enjoy it. And there's been a lot of money won up there. It's real surprising you never won it, but that healing, the healing got you. I didn't know if it'd be the healing or the bulldogging. Uh, no, nah, man, I bulldog. That's all that bulldogging. I bulldog him. Ask old Rocky. Rocky had this little old, little old saw horse, man. Got out of the sale barn. <laughs> and, yeah, he did. We had we had a nice little college, high school, college, a junior rodeo horse we rode. Yeah, Rocky had a nice one, man. Dang yeah, we bulldog. <laughs> yeah, we bulldogged a lot, man. Dang near every horse uh, uh, every horse we ever had came out of a sale barn, really. be honest with you, bro. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> We've spent they, a lot of they, hours they, in sale barns. Y'all trailed them up there in, uh, in the Clovis, man. Mm-hmm. Oh, we, we darn sure did. 
Roy, what, what do you think about the Cowboy Channel and the exposure rodeo is getting now? Unbelievable. You know what I mean? That's what's the greatest thing that happened to rodeo. You know what I mean? Uh, guys come in and they got their sponsors and yeah, I think that's the greatest thing. I mean, you, you, know, you can keep up with the stuff. Man, hell, like the other day I was going to go, they wanted me to go somewhere. I shoot, man, I can watch it on TV. You know yeah. what I mean? I'm just, yeah, I, I enjoy, I mean, shoot, especially the older people and then new fans, you know, kids coming up and you've got a followings and watching and, you know, your endorsements and stuff. But, and man, that's the greatest thing that ever happened. I mean, he's one of the greatest things that happened to, to, to sport a rodeo. What do you think about the way they've changed some of these big rodeos where there's hardly no average anymore? I don't like that. But, but I mean, it's not my decision. I mean, right. I think. I mean, they. I mean, I don't. I don't. They would come down to one head, one deal. To me, I was an average roper. They try to do that at the finals. It's been brought up here in the future just to come in the same way like that. And I said, they asked me. I said, shoot. You know, they say who's the world's champion and who won the average. You know, the average has been in that deal for so long. They want it to come down to one head. I mean, when I'm 40 years old, I win the average at the finals. Okay, I'm roping against 20 year olds and 23, you know, me younger guys. Okay, I'm not. I mean, I can remember. Uh, hell, I made the finals when I was 45. Okay, man, I could pass them in eight. You know, but, you know, so that's good for a fourth, fifth. You know, still getting some round, winning a little money. But man, I didn't have no seven ones and seven twos in me when you're 45 years old. Right. You know, so, I mean, I like the average deal. I mean, I can come in there and you get a start rope good. And, you know, all you got to do is go tie your last three or four down. You know, you had a good Christmas. You're going to win you 30, 50,000 out here, 60,000. And uh, that was the business part of it. Yet the crowd likes that faster deal. The the, the directors like it, I guess, or the committees. You know what I mean? I don't know. That's the way they want to see it come down to one. So, I don't. I wish the finals. Would, I hope they never change that. Some of the rodeos, you know what? I guess you do it. I always like the average. Yeah, me too. It always evens some stuff up. I thought, you know, like well, places it like does, and, then it, and things like that. It, exactly. It's like, and then I was talking to George Strait here whenever Cheyenne changed. When they, he, and George said, you know what? Some things don't never need to change. You know, I mean, it's like Cheyenne and my older guys went to trip steers. Man, that was their vacation. They rope, and you know, everybody could go in there and rope. And, you know, now they just take the top 40 and, you know what I mean? That's the daddy of them all. I wasn't, it, I, I wasn't for it, man. I just, I mean, I remember just old guys going up there just to steer roping. That was their vacation, you know, and they'd just stay a week and take their wives and, you know, and enjoy and ride together. And it was, it was rodeo. Now it's just fast and in and out and airplanes and get back to Denver, get to Salinas, get to Nampa, you know what I mean? All during, during Cheyenne. So, I don't know, you know, I don't know what it's coming to, but, you know, there's more money in it, and the, hill, the money's in it, and they, they run the show. That's the main thing, that money to a cowboy, for sure. They can, they can, <laughs> they can do it, they can do Houston wants to pay 50000 to the deal, they can make up the rules. Calgary wants to pay 100000 they can make up the rules. The American, they can make up the rules however they want to have it. If they're, you know, they sell the tickets, and that's, uh, I mean, how can you go to win American uh, 100000 you know, have a chance. We'll show up on you know, Tuesday on a midnight to run at a hundred thousand. It don't matter to us. I mean, I'll, I just you know, it's got so much better and it's class, you know, and it's it, you know, and it's it's according to who's on your board of directors and stuff that make these rodeos uh, what they are and keep them up. And who's entered in it? And who's doing it for the money? And who's doing it for the sport? Right. You know, I mean, it's just it's it's from your heart. I mean. He just doing it for for the money and his job, or is he really is his heart into it for for the contestants? You know what I mean? So that's the way I look at it, and then that's always the way it's been. And you know, I can look back from the Turtle Association, the stuff I read on it. You know, the guys that started, you know, going to Boston and Madison Square Garden and them, and I just read stories and stories on them when I'm growing up. And then, you know, then it comes to the RCA, then it comes to the PRCA. You know, and then you know, so it's just. Uh, it's, when it, it all changes. There's there's nobody on the board over four or five years in a row. It, it's, it's every event, it's something that changes. So, right. Roy, Who you know? Yeah, you mentioned George Strait there a while ago. How did you get acquainted with him and become such good friends? You know, uh, Oklahoma City, at Oklahoma City. I think eighty two. He tries roping, and his uh, road manager has to come out out of a deal, and he said, uh, "George would like to meet you. Would you like to meet him?" I said, "Yeah, I'd love to." And so I went and 
so I still had my strings around my neck and I went to this bus right there and people was around it and then this guy opened the door and it was George he was just sitting back there by himself and me and him sat there till he played and then later she just stayed in contact and got to be buddies and chewed up I went 12 New Year's Eve's with him and uh, he'd come to he'd play at the finals he'd stay out there and watch me rope Cheyenne he'd come when he played there and he took me a lot, well, a lot of places I never could have got to, like the, the, well, the Kentucky Derby, where you, I mean, where he sits on that celebrity row, and the people you meet with him, you know, with him, you know, around backstage, around his field, and I mean, it's, he's got the life. He's worked hard at it and spent a lot of miles, lots and lots of miles, and he deserves it. I mean, it's just he's handled it very class, and he's somebody you want to be around, and you know, you enjoy his friendship and through the years and. You know how me and him, the things that we've done and together, and I mean, it's the memories we have. Right. My wife's been stalking him for over 30, 30 years at least. So. Oh yeah. <laughs> it's pretty wild, yeah. Jimbo. I used to see these two guys pull up to, uh, I think, Pecos, Texas, together in the same rig, and uh, George Strait was actually roping in the in the in the uh, Pecos oh, at the yeah. rodeo or at Sonora at the rodeo. Him and him and Roy row up in a little uh, motorhome deal. Yeah, yeah, we went to. I don't know. We went around there to. I don't know. Big Spring, Stephenville, Shoot Pecos. We went around there and roped a few, a few times. And yeah, uh, yeah, he loved it. That was his love and passion. And he, I mean, he, he would still probably rope, but his his, his back hurts, and I mean, he's, he takes that joke, that jolt, and then he loping around just at his back. And when he quit roping, his, his back quit hurting a little. I think he says. So I don't. You know, I know he loved it though, and he and he rode pretty, he rode pretty damn good. Yeah, I always used to like seeing, uh, we'd be watching the finals there at home, back home, and we'd see they'd shoot up to a skybox and show you and Roy Cooper sitting up there. George or, I mean, you, and, you and George Strait. Well, hell, I'm, Roy Cooper's big a deal as George Strait mm-hmm. is to me. So Absolutely. For sure. Was yeah, it like, I appreciate hey, that. Would it have been like the Beatles hanging out with that guy? Does he get a – did the girls just go insane and just start screaming when they get a, a like a uh, just a glimpse of him walking through, <laughs> through the concourse? Ah, oh, man, you can – yeah, it's, it, he draws some attention, apparently. So it's, uh, man, you know what? Shoot, he, he's done He's done great. He's done great for, for, I mean, country music. Look what he's done for rodeo. I know he got the team roping at the, at the Cheyenne. I mean, he, I know that for a fact. I mean, he's he had his biggest biggest team roping in the world for them down there to give trucks and 100000 I mean, to win it. I mean, he had it for years. And, you know, he's done a lot of stuff for the sport of rodeo. And we all appreciate it too. You know, and I, you know what we love about him? He hasn't changed. His hat style's still the same. His still that's wearing right. his plain old cowboy boots, starched Wranglers, and a long sleeve shirt. And just, that's uh, him. And uh, that's what we love about him for sure. Hey, Roy, I've noticed, I know you're in a hurry trying to get off here, but I also wanted to ask you one more thing. You know, your boy, he's top notch steer roper too. Dang near won the world, or heck, he might have he won the world. He yeah. won the world roping steers. You won the world roping steers. But both of y'all were kind of spotty on your steer roping career. You might see, you might go 10 years without roping a steer. Um, how come that is? You know, uh, I can't really speak for him. I know he's really, really focused. He wants, uh, he wants to go buckle open kids. And he's really worked at it this year and got him some horses put together. And he works out a lot. I mean, he stays in the gym and, I mean, what can make him better. And steer open, two events takes it away from the other event. And really, you know, per- personally, I mean, once I, I accidentally won it, I mean, it should, you, you know it's an accident whenever you beat Guy Allen, you know, back in his day. So I just had a good afternoon, two good sun, Saturday and Sunday afternoon, I had a good horse. But I mean, but you know what? There's, it's not equal money. There's not a, you know, I don't know how to say it. It's just, first of all, there's not equal money. And next, and next of all, it costs a lot to rope steers. I mean, your entry fees are high. I mean, and there's certain places that's good. Now, man, I love to rope them at Pendleton. I love to rope them at Cheyenne. But, you know, you're going over here and we're trading money with the contestants. You know what I mean? The oh, contestants yeah. are tra- trading money. There's, there's not enough added money in it to make it, you know, good. I mean, the national finals are, you know, good. They're not, I mean, they weren't even that good back in my day. But, I mean, they're decent now. You know, I remember Trevor, I think 75000 up there a couple of years ago, or last time he wrote. You know what I mean? That's a pretty good couple of days, man. <laughs> I mean, 
So it, I mean, yeah, you know, we're running fifteen hundred dollar rounds back up there at, at, at Lazy E, and killed and went to three thousand. And you know, it's, it's just uh, it it takes away. That strutting takes away, and then you've got another horse, and you've got another you know, rodeos, and then you have to go over here, then back to roping kids, and you know what I mean. It, it, you know, I was looking at it the other day. <laughs> Me and Trevor, hell, Bobby Harris, he calf roping, steer roping, I mean, steer roping, team roping, JD, team roping, steer roping. And, you know, a lot of them guys, there's nobody that does that, calf roping, steer roping right now, that'll make the finals in two events. And, and the same way, looking at the Bulldog and the calf roping. Think about that years ago. Or, I mean, hell, Tom Ferguson, Kiff Open Bulldog, and Jimmy Cooper, Kiff Open Bulldog, and Chris Lavert, Kiff Open Bulldog, and Herbert, Kiff Open Bulldog. You know what I mean? Ryan Jarrett. Yeah, exactly. Kiff Open. Now, there's nobody that makes it in two events in the Kiff Open Bulldog, not even the Kiff Open Steer Open. Okay? Look at, uh, look at that. Or Team Open, with anything in Team Open. So, there's. I don't know what it is. I mean, that's too specialized. The events have gotten too tough. You got to specialize in them, I guess. Yeah, you, you know what? That's that's true. I mean, it, if you want to do it, I mean, you can go do it. But I mean, it's like tough. He just he said, you know what? He he did it for the all around and stuff. But, man, you're not gonna you, that's Stetson right, man. You're not. Baby, he he's hard to beat. You know, and he's. I mean, he was like a uh, Ty Murray went on him and me and Joe trying to beat all around against Ty Murray. You, I mean, he was in three riding events and shoot you ain't and then no equal money. So I mean, how was the chances? Think if that had equal money, man, back in the day with D. Pickett, and Leo Camarillo, and if that had equal money, team roping back in the day with them guys. Oh yeah, it would have been it would have been a different deal then. You know what I mean? What do you think about the guys now? I feel like a lot of these guys are more of a professional athlete now than ever before. Um, you know, me growing up, I didn't see a lot of the bulldoggers or calf ropers and guys, you know, jogging and working out in the mornings, you know, when we were getting ready for slack. But now it seems like we see a lot of guys that they take their, like you're saying, oh, yeah, did. did you, did you work out much, Roy? I did up? at the end when I would not, when I was deal, I practiced a bunch. I'd run 30 or 40 a day, but at the end, when I was rodeo, when I was 40 years old, 50, I mean, yeah, I'd, every morning for the slacks, I'd go run them grandstands a little bit or jump a rope a little, just something, you know what I mean? Just to stay a little cattier and, you know, you got to make yourself, you know, do it. I mean, how much good a shape you want to be in, how, you know, how quick you want to be and you're smart, you know, you, you, you got to think smarter, be smarter and, you know, I mean, it's tough, baby. And it's not, and it guys now, I mean, it, they, every one of them go at it. You know I mean? That, I mean, you, they go at it. I mean, there's a lot of money to be won right now. It's a tough Yeah, there is. It, and you start in Reno here, here in a couple of weeks and there, I mean, you're going to, you can go shoot at some money till Pendleton's over now. So it'll be, I mean, it's amazing. This thing just, you know, it's got to be hell. That five dollar gas. It's diesel. You better win something <laughs> <laughs> for sure. Hey, we talk about the Mount Rushmore of uh, calf ropers. With well, we talked John McBeck the other day. We talked about Mount Rushmore of uh, saddle bronc riders. But with you, who's your Mount Rushmore of calf ropers, Roy? Ah, uh, man, I got several. Man, I love Phil Line, yeah, Ernie Taylor, Tom Ferguson, Gary Ledford. You know, I mean, I them was in the older guys. Like I, I really liked them. You know, I mean, Barry Burke, you know, them, I mean, they was, we rodeoed, you know, deep pickets, and I mean, good. And, and then you see the guys come around. I got to see them go and, you know, when Trevor come around and Joe, Fred, you know, and Cody, you know, I mean, it's like, that's another group and another group, you Shane, Hansley and Tuff, you know, and they come around and they, you now you come with this Riley Pruitt, I mean, Riley Webb, you know, he's 18, tough kid. And then, uh, you know, I mean, with Chad, Chad uh, Mayfield. I mean, there's there's some there's some talent out there now. Oh, yeah, that guy's unbelievable. There's more there's a lot of talent. More good ropers right now than I think ever been. Really, I mean, I've never seen anything like it. You pull up and well, over half the field has got a legitimate chance of beating you for sure. Well, they're fast and it's different. You know, I mean, you got more chances nowadays. Look like. Why do you think the horses don't seem to last as long now as they used to back in your day, Roy? Well, it's all these little buildings and throwing it. You know what I mean? It's, it's who takes care of them or, you know, who rides them. I mean, I, my last few years, I rode, I had two or three horses. I'd ride one at probably 30 rodeos here, this and 30. You know, they can't take that trailer every day and ask them for their life every day. You know what I mean? I mean, if you 
scattered out and take care of them. I mean, shoot. Look at Charmaine, how she took her, her bell horse. They're standing in a row. You know what I mean? That, I mean, just, I mean, great horses are great horses. I don't care if they're six years old or 15 years old. You got to take care of them. They, I mean, they got to feel good when they, when they run too. So. All right. I mean, if you got to feel good, they got to feel good, and you got to draw good and <laughs> then rope good. Well, Roy, we sure appreciate you coming on. And uh, ah, man, I enjoyed it with you guys. Man, I'm gonna get up there. I'm gonna stop by, and man, I appreciate what you are doing for Paul Huskus to help the museum and the sport of rodeo. And I enjoyed visiting. Y'all have a good one. Thank you, and God bless. Hey, Roy, did you ever? I'm sorry to even bug you. I know you're wanting to get off here. <laughs> Did you ever compete in any uh, Ben Johnson's pro celebrity ropings he had? Oh, yeah. I went there. With o, yeah, I went with Joe Ben over there with him and Eddie Gaines over to him. Reba was over there. Yeah, we, yeah, we went to several of them. Hopefully they didn't there. have you healing, though, did they? Oh, uh, man, I can catch in them uh, celebrity roping. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just I just couldn't catch for the money, man. <laughs> Are you still roping any? today man I, I i was playing around in my shoulder i gotta have a shoulder operation over here next uh, i'm waiting on a call today actually i've done had mri and a cat scan and shoot this right one's gone i can't even raise it up right anymore and i knocked it out of place the other day and so yeah i'd love to you don't realize how much you love to rope i mean i last couple of days i got on a horse they sat on one and i just rode out in the pasture and enjoy it and then you don't realize how much you like the rope until you can't swing a rope and then yeah i love to i got some good young horses and playing and i enjoy, I enjoy just playing i don't want nobody to see me rope really but <laughs> a few years ago jimbo <laughs> he came out of retirement and he said i'm gonna come up here and win this steer open at cheyenne i'll be damned if he didn't win the steer open at cheyenne he hung around there all week he was there from the very first of it to the very last <laughs> of it and he took home the buckle money and everything unbelievable mm. Oh uh, yeah, that was just, that's another luck shot, probably. I just yeah, I enjoy, I enjoyed Cheyenne. And, he gets you know, a lot, right? Mm -hmm. okay. There you go. The you best rope I ever seen him rope, Jimbo. National final steer roping. He broke the arena record on ten head, and these were big, soggy black Mexican steers they were roping, and he tied them all in an average of thirteen. Unbelievable! It still should be standing today, even though it's not, because. There's no one else that could have tied those 10 steers any faster, I don't think. Well, I appreciate that. That was a, I remember that up there at Lazy, but it was like, uh, man, I had a good horse. I mean, that's a, that's what helped me. I had a good horse, and I was in the right pattern. But, you know, and, you know that was steer roping. You had, I mean, you had to see, like, shoot, point of the shoulder around of it. Now you have them little steer roping. You just nod and go right there with them and. You know, it, it ain't like it, it ain't like it was. Everything's changed. I watched it here just a while back, Jimbo, and it really was steer roping. It was some of the best steer roping I've ever seen right there that week. So, Roy, yes, thanks sir. for coming on, and we wish all you guys luck going on down the road, and we hope for some more world championships in your family. Thank you, sir. Keep up what y'all doing. We'll be together soon. Next time. Thank you, Roy. Yes, sir. All right. Until next week, this has been the episode of Cowboys of the Osage podcast with the greatest roper. One of them never lived, Roy Cooper. Absolutely. All right. We'll see everybody next week.